Can horses I, float? They all float down Aren't here. They Billy? made of wood. I I don't know. I don't know how to horse very well. <laughs> And welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how-tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. This week, NVIDIA Prime does what? Winton don't? Ninton don't? I don't know. Either way, they found a way to make your integrated graphics actually work on your laptop. It's brilliant. And uh, recording your games the black magic way. I'm going to show you how. If you've ever dreamed of being free from Windows CE, we got some good news for you. And deep dive into the guts of the Steam API and plumb the depths of one man's sanity. Valve figures the best way to keep making money off of skins is to make sure uh, that external regulation is not necessary. And at an app image of a GUI to configure your steering wheel game controller appears on itch. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Vin, joined every week by our tame Canadian podcaster, the man of many tiles, Jordan Swing, and that, that dulcet uh, PTZ himself as Pan Tilt Zoom, Pedro Mateus, Pedro uh, Tilt Zoom. I, like I, th- I thought that was Pedro Traumatic Stress Disorder, <laughs> which I have in spades. Also, yes, and together with our um, disorders combined, inflicting on chat realm dynamic, joining us live each and every week, helping us form the most sexy... A Voltron's cocaine Voltron. What's up, beautiful people? Jordan, why don't you tell me what's going on in your life while I fix this shot? <laughs> All right. Well, <laughs> uh, I, I, I have some random crap on my Amazon wish list, and uh, one of them was uh, some stuff to expand my reading list. Shay was uh, nice enough to send me a copy of The Black Company by Glenn Cook. Uh, gives me a little note here. It says, cheers, dude. So it got me thinking. Maybe, uh, maybe I should actually, like... Start a Linux Gamecast book club where, like, if you send me a book, I'll do a review of it. Except I gotta like, I I was thinking about that, and I would have to I would have to have the ability to just say no because otherwise I'd be inundated with about nine thousand copies of Mein Kampf. And mm. I'd, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, Pedro, what's going on? You have a new camera. I can see your horrible face in greater clarity. It seems. I don't know. Would you like to see it in even more clarity? <laughs> because. <laughs> No, we, yes, we need, we need, I can do that now. <laughs> pa- pa- Pedro, you can't just zoom and not enhance. You have to zoom and enhance. Right. Uh, it does the enhancing on its own. Yeah, uh, it's uh, no, no, one no, of them... no, it does. No, it doesn't, sweetheart. No, it doesn't. <laughs> it's one of the uh, Logitech Connect um, conferencing cameras. And yeah, it uh, UVC just immediately picked up on it. So it's like, hey, hey uh, boss lady, I'm totally going to take this camera home it's like okay all right (laughs) i I always love these stories of like pedro embezzling from work it's it just makes me feel like i'm again my life she knows it's here if i need to bring it back i will bring it back (laughs) just like right after they discover it's missing right uh, th- Again, I, I I've gonna told say, them then, that I brought it here. <laughs> I, I, I was thinking more like Pedro gets haunted by like ghosts of cameras past, present, and future. Oh, I mean dude. the other camera is still there. <laughs> he, he's just gonna be saying it, man, when they're deporting him. He's like, but they said I could take. <laughs> You know what? I, I have a follow-up to that, but I'm going to hit the eject button because it's go. too dark. <laughs> too dark. Ben, what's, what's going on with you? Oh, baby. Um, you know, I'm, I was a little bit cranky because I accidentally found myself with, like, uh, not one, but two um, Blackmagic uh, 4K capture grids because uh, I told the story Wednesday. Maybe, Jordan, you're familiar with the concept of seeing, like, a starting bid, and you're like, oh, okay, you'll never go for that. I'll just, you know, uh, I'll pretend I'm going to win that. And... A week later, he's like, oh, what's in the mail? Oh, okay. Well, like that changes plans because <laughs> I ended up getting an Intensity Pro 4K for 100 bucks. It's oh, like, nice. huh. But it was missing the um, dongle cable, which is $100. Mm. If you buy it new, get it used Don't. at $6. Yep. So <laughs> uh, as soon as I plugged that in, played with Resolve, with the audio out through the mixer and everything was all synced up, I was like, yeah, I'm not even mad anymore, man. All right, I'm cool. <laughs> I, I can live this dual capture card. It's, it's not going to replace our aspirational because fuck you. That's why you know 4K 64 port deal. That that's still in the future. But we now know 
it's possible. And it's brilliant, unlike the horse. Yeah, the, the horse has been a little bit stupid lately. I think it's because it's not taking its vaccines. It's the steam! Let's stop the days of the week. We need to... And yeah. Need, go ahead. As I was going to say, we, 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 need, we need Valve's approval. <laughs> yeah, uh, and if you are creating new skins and new um, hats and new things for your TF2s and your Dota 2s and your CSGOs, then you will need Valve's approval. Uh, mostly because <laughs> uh, the the article originally said that all games that had uh, items on the workshop would need Valve's approval, but that turned out not to be the case. Right now, it's just uh, a Valve's own games, like your Dota 2s and your TF2s and your CSGOs. And it makes sense, because... Valve is making a lot of money out of selling those crates and the skins for the weapons in CSGO and the hats uh, for Team Fortress 2. And they want to make sure that the with the ever-growing interest in micro, microtransactions in video games and loot boxes and whatnot, that the whatever external entity happens to be doing the, you know happens to be looking into this stuff that they go okay oh so valve is ma managing that we can sort of leave them alone unless something arises at least that's what they hope we'll see <laughs> yeah man uh, it's I, I get why they're doing it but it's valve so who knows i mean do you think they'll ever roll it out to where this is gonna be like a common thing though for everyone. Uh, that would imply them having to do curation for all the games that have workshop support, so no. Okay, do, do you imagine a future where they try to automate it? Yes. Oh, yeah. Because okay. they're, they're, try, they're, try, they're trying to automate everything. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it is just taking advantage of people who really like gambling and trying to skirt local and state and government or uh, federal gambling, gambling laws, but, and, I don't know, some, some minor lip service towards self-regulation mm -hmm. might be enough to throw legislators off the trail but i don't i don't think that's going to be the case there's enough of a stink being raised that they're, they're they're trying they're trying to show that they're doing something and most people will not care without you know lobbying hmm. well that's that goldberg man goldberg everyone's <laughs> favorite hebrew wrestler no they uh it's also the uh, steam emulator for those of you who are concerned that steam may one day die and you'll have no way to stick around and play multiplayer games through the steam api this guy has been uh, working on a tool to fix that and he has after after a year he's made himself a little a little blog post about the point uh not point two five two two point five uh, version of it and yeah, it devolves into a rant a lot faster than I thought it would. Like I, I mentioned in the pre pre super shows and that like sometimes when you write a lot of documentation, you get to a point where like you just stop caring and you just start like stream of thoughting in there just to like fill fill text. And yeah, this 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 guy kind of went a little nuts, but it, it's kind of interesting, right? Because and ultimately that's why I dislike macaroni and cheese. Ex exactly right, like tr <laughs> truffle oil. What the hell is this garbage? Um. Yeah, but ap apparently, apparently, you can't actually fix performance issues in the Steam API because games actually depend on delay. Uh, so fixing performance will break stuff for some games. There's also some complaining about how uh, the Steam API implements lobbying. Basically, all the hoops you have to jump through to make uh, the API emulation work about as good as it can. But it's 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 available now. The not point two five release notes has uh, inventory support for you know emulated inventories, a new Steam SDK. Um, you can actually set up leaderboards now, and uh, Steam networking socket fixes. So if you're interested in um, and if you're interested in trying this out, and you're not afraid of losing your Steam account, give it a whirl. So <laughs> what is this for exactly? What type of emulation? Um, it ju it just does the Steam API, so you can do right click join over like a local network. Okay. Yeah, yes. Um they're 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 working uh apparent according to this blog post, the next big goal is getting like all the overlay functionality working. So um that will be a thing. So it'd it, be it, like local multi we could call it like a network, maybe like a, a, a local area network, maybe. That's a good name for it. Possibly. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might be onto something. Good work. Uh, uh, c'est possible. Uh, uh 
You, yeah, uh, uh, yeah, no, no, I'm not letting you out of that. Ah, uh, you were going to say something. Do it. I dare you. I was taking a breath. Uh, <laughs> that's how I breathe. That's a weird breath. Because <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I'm a mouth breather. For uh, Rust, uh, new things as an update to the previous post we talked about last week where we said uh, wonderful things like we never have to talk about Rust again. Oh, too bad. <laughs> no more Linux Clyde. To which you might rightfully be like, you know what? Fuck you, face punch. Followed by, hold your horses, man. Check this business out. This is what I like to call the best resolution possible. Because we're talking about refunds. That's right. If you've played it on Linux once, pretty much guaranteed refund. Um, That's ours played completely irrelevant. Uh, They don't care if you've played it on Windows too. Uh, they do make a mention like, hey, Proton, that's a thing if you want to hang on to it. But, you know, easy anti-cheat, womp, womp, and you're waiting on Valve. Maybe that's going to get sorted. Maybe it won't. I don't know. Lads. So, okay, if you don't know what's going on, uh, last week, uh, Gary came out and they're like, yeah, we suck at making Linux ports. Our bad. Deal with it, question mark. And this week <laughs> is more of a, you know what? That's kind of a dick move. You want your buddy back? Come and get it. Yeah, they're 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 trying to do a little bit of a separate but equal thing that just did not fly over well because you know people buy a multiplayer game so that they can play with their friends. All I gotta say to this is so long and thanks for all the dicks. So sad that it should come to this. We tried to warn you all, but oh dear. Um, yeah, yeah it's, and it's it's basically that. Bye bye, bye Gary. People who are wanting to actually play this under Linux, we're playing it through Wine or through Proton anyways. So... Yeah. And this is about as graceful a walkout as you can expect from Gary Newman. Uh, They... Previously, even in last the last week's post, they were like trying to shirk any and all responsibility and trying to make themselves look like the good guys in all of this when, you know... They were the ones making the game, and they were the ones who cocked it up in the first place, but whatever. That, that, that's that, that's an interesting way of putting that, like, oh, we we, we did more support more for supporting our Linux version than other gaming companies. Uh-huh. Let's pat ourselves on the back for not having a functional <laughs> client. But yeah, no, seriously, after reading this and them actually going to Valve, it's like, okay, let's offer everyone who wants a refund, basically, if they played it on Linux, they could have a refund regardless. That's about as graceful a walkout as anyone would expect. So, peace out. Mm. <laughs> Good. Okay. Um, a game that, unfortunately, when we reviewed it, I had to play it through Proton because the Windows version didn't work with the Steam <laughs> overlay. And I had a Steam controller. And guess what? That didn't fly very well. Yeah, no. And it. Uh, I think that still hasn't been fixed. Mm, uh, yeah, the uh, This is update 14 for Dead Cells. And it is, uh, they do say console players can expect it in the next two to three weeks. But it is available if you own the game on Steam right now. So basically what this is, it's all about the bosses. Dum dum did it dum dum. Uh, <laughs> and... <laughs> Uh, oh, what she's what it reader, does, man. it introduces new weapons and new enemies. The new enemies are like uh, teeny tiny little versions of the bosses, uh, and each one has like uh, one of the boss's attacks, so it'll like prepare you for when you go into the boss room proper, uh, and it'll actually, you'll at least have an idea of what the heck's going on. Uh, the weapons, well, they're the boss weapons. Basically, they're weapons that let you do those boss attacks. So now that you have an even hand, so to speak, because, look, you were able to uh, defeat that boss, so now you've unlocked their weapon. That's very good. That's very good. Because I am one of those um, idiots that still hasn't managed to beat the second boss, because keeps teleporting all over the map, and i just like, what do I do? Are they ever going to fix the thing where, like, when you die, it starts you back at the beginning again? I think that's called a roguelike. That's a bug, dude. (laughs) That's just straight up a roguelike. (laughs) Speaking of mods, I like that. I like the game. It's fun. It's great until you die. Then you're like, nah, take two. I'm like, nah, fuck you. Uh, (laughs) Abandon ship, mateys. Yeah, this is so this is a thing. Um, Abandoned Ship is um, a game they've 
put out uh, they put out a little blog post. They're saying, "Hey, we want to do some Mac and Linux testing because surprise, surprise, they don't have the capacity to fully validate their builds." So they decided, "Why don't we? Why don't we give this to the community uh, so that uh, so that they can give us some feedback?" Um, and it's it's good that they're soliciting uh, help, the help, but whether or not they actually fix the issues or pull a Gary is you know to be determined. <laughs> um, but it's it's available now. They give you the uh, password you need to uh, get access to the uh, depot. You can try it out uh, if you're so inclined. You can get it in early access for uh, thirty bucks. Yeah, mm. that's uh, <laughs> twenty four ninety nine. Yeah, I yeah. was about to say you normally in early access don't start branching out your supported platforms if everything's going swimmingly um, and, uh but yeah the 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 game the game itself actually looks pretty interesting though it has like a really nice visual style it's trying to be like an oil painting um and the, the, the whole thing is like you're on a ship you gotta explore you gotta fight pirates and sea monsters and stuff like that one thing one interesting twist is I like the notion that ship death doesn't actually equal the end of game because if you can get your captain off the ship, you can always rebuild. And in gaming, we're very, very used to like, oh, the main thing ends and now the game is over, right? But toying around with that failure mechanic and allowing you to rebuild is kind of a compelling mechanic that I kind of wish more games would try to experiment or at least experiment with like different sorts of loss mechanics because game over is kind of boring, right? If you're playing a ro if you're playing a roguelike, that means you have to start from the very beginning. If you're playing just a regular game, it means going back from the checkpoint. What if you fail and then you have to deal with the consequences of that failure? Do you know what that game would be like genuinely needs permadeath? Uh, Tetris. Tic Tac Toe. It's called Tic Tac Toe Blam. Yeah, it's called Tic Tac Toe Blam. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's um. That's a, a good way to get your Mac and Linux versions tested. And it's one that we've seen many developers implement over the years. However, as you're doing this, uh, you're most likely going to be dealing with people who already bought it to play it on Windows. And maybe they have a Linux laptop and that's what they're going to try it on. So it's only going to be a cursory glance at best. Uh, so it's not ideal, although... With the advent of Proton, there are a lot of Linux people out there that if they like to look at the game, they'll just buy it. And if it works with Proton, awesome. They don't even have to either dual boot or do whatever. It'll just work with the Protons. Speaking of Proton. Well, check this out, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> boys and girls. Not to be outdone by... Um, <laughs> Hot Dog Street Vendor Manager 2019. Uh, <laughs> this is patch notes for Pro Cycling Manager 2019. Let, let's just get that out of the way. Cycling Manager. We've come to this. <laughs> really. I'm not even going to click on the store page because I know it's going to have like 300,000 positive reviews and it's going to be the top 10 of Steam. I, I, actually, no, it's, it's mixed. mixed. It's right. mixed. Yeah. Okay. See, wait, wait, now, wait. the important thing for this one is I, I don't care i mean if you like the management games more power to you that's brilliant the thing that caught my eye with this one is the fixes because crashes with proton that's right we're actually seeing two fixes implemented because of the version of proton i was working with is is this our weird bizarre future no I'm okay i with I, that if it is <laughs> we, 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 were, we, were talk, we were talking about this a couple weeks ago in the after after show, uh, where it's like the the uh, with the, with the rate that Proton's developing and the amount of attention and love that Steam is putting into it, like yeah, Win thirty two has become the dominant game application API. It doesn't matter what operating system you're running on now; it's just going to be a Win thirty two exe, whether it's run via the native Win thirty two API under Windows or mm -hmm. just Proton. That that's what games will ship as from now on. So you might as well be fixing this stuff. How is, I gotta, the, how is this game eleven gigajoules? No, here, so so here 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 here's where here's where I get confused, right? Uh, cause uh, twenty <laughs> was it? Uh, this is this is an entire series. It, they've they've been going on for since 2014, 2013. It's a manager game, of course it is. Yeah, <laughs> but like you 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 can still pick up Pro Cycling Manager twenty seventeen for thirty five bucks. Oh. <laughs> <What the> <laughs> Oh man, and I, I I guarantee people. Yeah, like Ben said, there will be people who are all about this fucking game. I 
Listen, people are into weird shit, man. It's not our place to judge. We're just we don't judge. Their money. I, I, hey, man, I know people like their Sims. Mm, that's brilliant, man. Okay. Blast from the past. Uh, we'll be talking about this a bit more later. Um, hipster pixels, 3D pixels, skeleton pixels is a thing, man. Ion Fury, formerly um, Ion Maiden. Can't yeah. say yes. that. Nope. Beep. Uh, redacted. <laughs> Beep. Uh, so this is pretty cool, man. Uh, Jordan, I think you were going with me. It's like, check out the download size on Brad. Pedro, you had the same thoughts, right? Yeah, no, when I like installed it and I got the little uh, Steam win, it's like, you'll need 50 megabytes of space. It's like, oh, they really uh, screwed up the um, Steam depots with this one. But then it downloaded and I hit play and the game started. It's like, yep. oh, right, this is using the build engine. Right. <laughs> Itsy bitsy teeny weeny, and you're wondering about it. I mean, this is from 3D Realms, the creators of Duke Nukem 3D, Max Pay, and all the fun stuff, Shadow Warrior. Um, all, and th- this is more Duke 3D, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is Duke 3D all the way. <laughs> we don't want to spoil it, but if you want to get a taste of it, it's $24.99 right now, and it's available single player only. I would have liked some multiplayer in that, even if it was just Deathmatch, but hey. Pick and choose. What do we need to run this? Anything fancy? Not really. No, it, it's, no it's, you can it, even pick Duke. like the old, yeah, the old version, which basically is compatible with any computer built since 1993, for the most part. So, so, so I, I, I went, I went and double checked. Um, Eduke, the engine comes in at a whopping, um, <laughs> at a whopping eight megabytes. So, yeah, I believe that because I remember, you know, downloading that over dial up like 14.4 and it wasn't yeah. unbearable yeah so the the remaining 42 mix is just the map so <laughs> right <laughs> and yeah. the, actually the, the maps themselves aren't that big they're just like you got they're no they're tiny yeah. yeah yeah so yeah so that that download side is as well to be expected Especially, again because it's fi- <laughs> pre- prepare to hear a lot of this it's fucking e-duke um <laughs> yep <laughs> All right, Sex Moans, the Squeakle, uh, yeah, Electronic Super Joy. You might remember it from such humble bundles as a bunch of them. But there's uh, <laughs> at least the first three. Yeah, but um, but there's a there's a sequel out now. Uh, it's free to play. You can get the gold edition for fourteen bucks. So that's pretty neat. Um, yeah, if you played Electronic Super Joy, this is more of the same. There's lots of uns uns, lots of wub wub, um, lots of seizure tastic visuals. This looks like the limbo kid got a hold of some drugs. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> plus, 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 there are like super graphic sex modes that unfortunately you can turn off. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, every time you hit a checkpoint, like I, someone I straight up has an orgasm. Too, costs too much. Yeah, I know because you're a cheapskate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is uh, free to play and. If you want to, you know, reward the developers like you did a good job. I like your game. You can pay them an extra thirteen bucks for the gold edition, which yeah, it needs a minimum of three gigs of RAM. I'm about to say, man, <laughs> I, I spent all my money finding that three gig RAM. <laughs> Damn, dude. I mean, you know, but- considering the amount of phones nowadays that have uh, six gigs of RAM or twelve gigs of RAM. Yeah, those are floating around. This is, this is eight. <laughs> like, <laughs> mine has three. <laughs> Mazel tov. This really. <laughs> ashes to ashes. Shut the hell up. Return to dust. A- asses to asses, <laughs> asses indeed. To shuts and I don't know, man. Things. Yes. So, uh, return to dust with Anodyne too, and you may remember Anodyne because. Well, uh, Jordan brought it up in the show notes. It, it, it was a Linux game. It also had a Windows and Mac version that ran on Adobe Air. Mm. Yes, that Adobe Air. <laughs> yeah. That, and uh, wait a minute, it could do th- Air could do three D. No, this, no, this, 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 no, this is di- <laughs> different. Different engine, different oh, game. Okay, okay. It's Trogdor. <laughs> if he was whatever a house. it is. Uh, the, it is a pretty big leap. At least the 3D events are a very big leap from the first Anodyne. But they, it's like frictional. They can't really get rid of like the monsters in the horror setting. Uh, so when you like talk to a new character, you go into a dungeon inside said character. Giggity. Uh, and that is a 2D like top-down affair. So yeah, no, they're 
What do they really have against comfortable anti, at least, outside so. of their comfort zone? What 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 do they have against graphics past the PlayStation One era? Because that's what this, <laughs> this that's what the straight up look. Those those clouds don't look PS One, but everything else kind of actually it's more PlayStation Two. I'm I'm yeah. misremembering. I'm misremembering how good the PlayStation One actually looked. Maybe because I was like eight at the time. Okay, w- but, w- what you're thinking about is like PS Two seen on a modern um, HD TV. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad they moved away from Adobe Air, though, because my biggest gripe with the original is like, yeah, you had to jump through some fucking hoops to get Air running on Fedora. Check, oh, out, yeah. check, check out Brad here on the reviews. A one of a kind splicing of PS1. So <laughs> correct a mundo with 16 bit <laughs> aesthetics. I don't, listen, you, random Eurogamer quote that is unattributed. I don't I don't trust you. Mm. Um but yeah, like the, the 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 mixing up of the game thing, where like you have the 3D explorey overworlds, and then you have the dungeons thing. It's it's an interesting riff on the sort of Zelda Link Between Worlds type game. Uh, I don't know. Do you but, want to take the Pepsi challenge? Because on the OS requirement, it's recent Kubuntu Steam OS only in Cat. I saw only. I saw that. If you try and run <laughs> this on Hannah Montana Linux, you will die like Death Note style. You'll just have That's heart technically Ubuntu. Just saying. <laughs> I'm sorry. What is what Solus says what? Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Closed. <laughs> won't fix. Yes, won't fix. That's what they I, say. <laughs> you know what? Spay new to your pets. Coming up next, we talk about some NVIDIA driver advances that are very, very welcome. And maybe if you're one of the three people in the world who uses a driving wheel under Linux, well, stay tuned. You're going to be very surprised. So we have put away the horse for another week, and now it's time to say thank you. Did we ride thank the horse dry and put him up wet? Wait, how do you ride horse a horse? Horse jerky. Right? Mm. Can horses I, float? They all float Aren't down here. they Billy? made of wood? I, I don't know. I don't know how to horse very well. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> I'm just saying, keep me away from horses, man. Let, 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 listen, good. This, this is an ongoing problem, and if you want to help Ven learn how to horse better, you can maybe support us via one of the various means. You can head it over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a support tab that drops down into a whole bunch of other things like uh, LibrePay or Bitcoin or PayPal, or you can go on over to Patreon.com slash LinuxGameCast and get a bunch of cool stuff in exchange for your money, like access to the pre-pre-super shows and, or the show show notes or our discord channel where we're hanging out for the rest of the week just shit posting non-stop <laughs> shit posting 24 7 it's a horrible <laughs> place filled with terrible people it's <laughs> one of the things that I, I will definitely take away from linux gamecast is like we have that that that's a very unique jam yeah. day in and day out Yes, it's, it's just the, the constant stream of shit coming out of everyone involves brains in a, in like a in a chat program. It's brilliant. Uh, you can all you can also uh, head on over to our Amazon store where we. Uh, I mean, we don't really use it to sell things. We use it to indicate what we use to make this show sort Thanks, of kind Amazon. of. Well, something we're going to be talking about later. If I have everything updated, uh, you know, as we always say goodbye on New or wherever. Get it on eBay like I did with the uh, video encoders that we picked up that Jordan and Pedro are currently being sent through. Um, everything else that you know you see that we use that we've tested, that's something we wanted to do for a long time. But yeah, uh, that's cool. Um, spe- speaking of Amazon, we Pedro and I also have some wish lists. Uh, I got something from it this week. Uh, you might notice that there's nope. there's a tile over there now. <laughs> where there wasn't one before. Um, that, that is because Michael G uh, sent me some tiles and he left me, gave me a little note. It says, fix your tiles, bro. And so I did because he paid money for them. Um, but yeah, if you, if you buy some stuff off the wish list, you get to go on Frank's fuck wall. You can be one of his fuck buddies. It's pretty great. You get to fly through the air, space, air you, and space uh, in the uh, credits. Fra- I wouldn't take that, Frank. I just, I just wouldn't, man. Don't be like <laughs> that, Frank, dude. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna fight Frank. I'll fight him. I'll you'll kick his ass. He'll fuck you up, son. Uh, bring bring it, muffin. Um, <laughs> but yeah, we spe- spe- speaking of muffins, we have a store. You can clothe yourself in Linux Gamecast apparel and broadcast to your friends that you like a Q list internet podcast. Hey man, I don't think uh, she and Linda picked up uh, the LWDW shirts for that other crazy yep. show that we do, and um, we finance oh, yeah. all of this through you, commercial free. We got this freeware thing. It's a horrible business idea, but it keeps us honest. And we want to thank each and every one of you for making this nightmare train possible because you are 
responsible for it. I don't know if that's a good thing, but it is a thing. Okay. <laughs> this uh, one's on we're, you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're, 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 we're the WinRAR of Linux gaming. <laughs> we're pushing responsibility <laughs> away from ourselves. Uh, Linux, Solaris, FreeBSD, what are we talking about? We're talking about a driver and which driver, you might ask, 435.17. Why would you care about this? Well... Eventually, this might, this is, this is the start. This is the baby steps of getting rid of things like Bumblebee. Yes. Eventually, only on X Windows, not Wayland. With very recent um, GPUs, question mark, Jordan? Okay, so let's let's wind this back a little bit. You never actually needed a Bumblebee for a while. Um, the NVIDIA driver, since I believe 318, supported full display offloading. So you can you could actually set up a prime display under uh, the NVIDIA drivers, which is just a dummy display that would just render things on the GPU and copy them over. That has the downside of effectively requiring that you have to choose between NVIDIA GL and the Mesa GL because it would mm -hmm. overwrite the libraries. Now, this is not the case. Now you can actually do actual API offloads uh, by setting an environment variable. So you, still need, you still need to set up the display, but now you can just, you don't have to offload the entire uh, window render to the secondary display. It'll just do OpenGL or Vulkan, which is pretty neat. Uh, it'll also enable some better dynamic power management stuff because you don't have to have a display constantly running. Um, yeah, so if you uh, if you have a laptop, this is the driver that you've been waiting for. Um, Although you could do a lot of this stuff, it's just a little more complicated. This is a slightly more elegant solution is that this allows the you automatic lover. It's like something that you would have expected to have, like a decade ago. You would have expected this behavior. I mean, I it's mean, NVIDIA. at least seven years ago, if Nvidia had had this, Linus wouldn't have flipped them off. Do, he probably, he probably no, still Linus would, would never. <laughs> you know that poster behind nope. you? <laughs> nope. You're seeing shit. <laughs> that, 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 that's, that's, that's not his middle finger. It's his ring finger. He's, he's doing this. He, he's saying, <laughs> look, dude, he's clearly saying NVIDIA's number one in this, okay? Yeah. <laughs> number one. Yeah. Yeah, let's let, let's let's continue to spin our wheels. How about that? <laughs> yes, and if uh, by any chance you like to spin your wheels with some dirt rally, and you have an actual steering wheel plugged into your PC, you'll probably realize that the way to configure those in Linux is spotty at best. Yeah, just plug them you, in; they work. <laughs> Linux. Yeah, you, if you plugged it in and if it works exactly as you want it to, great. But chances are, if you have one of those wheels that technically supports up to, like, 900 degree rotation, uh, you may have found out that the software sometimes would freak out a little bit. So, now there's a little GUI that will basically take all of the uh, background stuff, like your EV devs and your joystick uh, configs and everything else, and put it in a teeny tiny little very neat uh, looking window. And you can set, like, the turn radius, just how far the uh, the wheel will turn. You can set, like, the rumbles. You can set a bunch of other things. And it's available for download on itch. And if you want to build it from sauce or maybe even contribute, you can go to their GitLab, which... Yeah, Jordan, I, I was definitely having a belt. I was like, wait, he's going to... He's gonna, there it is. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> yeah. That, 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 thank, thank you, Ted. That was the joke. So you're going to do all of the... Um, this thing's 53 megs, and I was like, oh, so it ships with, oh, and you're going to install a bunch of dependencies, too. Okay. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's done in Python, so that's kind of to be expected. I mean, it, it's, it, yeah, it, it's nice to it's nice to be able to um, actually emulate other wheels with the one wheel you do have in case, like, there's some weird hardware stuff with a game that, oh, it doesn't work with this wheel, but it's pretty much identical to this other wheel. I don't understand how racing wheels work. Uh, I just assume that they spin and spin and spin and spin. But the, for the eight of you who have like the crazy uh, like derp rally setup or whatever, this will be great for you, right? This would make make for a great video, man. I, I could hook up a um, force feedback wheel to this desk. That would get interesting real quick when it <laughs> yeah, shatters see, into a million pieces. Oh yeah, see <laughs> see if you can get it to control Turbo Jetta too. That would be the other thing, dude. <laughs> yeah, when we move to a bigger place, I I'm gonna get a wheel and. These of things cheese. <laughs> no, I want no, a wheel no. of cheese. Steering. Everyone wants Game a Game controller a steering wheel. <laughs> I like the idea. I love the idea of force feedback, but I will end up not racing. Like, you're not going to tell me to move that way. Look. And, and just, yeah. Just, no. <laughs> I, I will defeat you in-game wall. Just wait and see. 
pretty much, man. <laughs> That's brilliant. We need gooey bullshit like that. And I say that with all the love and respect that it deserves because that's not a simple thing, man. You don't just plug it in. Then the person's going to go to the manufacturer's website and they're going to tell them to die in a fire. And they're like, where do I go now? And it's like, oh, it's simple. Just open up your terminal and type in these 30 moon commands. And you can... this, this you can point them at. It's say, a slider yeah. and some tick boxes yeah. and maybe a little drop box. Yeah. <laughs> and then they're going to call you back a week later and be like, man, I can't make heads or tails of this Nintendo power bad, man. It's ridiculous. <laughs> I hate Linux. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, try, I tried to hook up my driving wheel to my Xbox Connect, and now my house is on fire. <laughs> um, Linux finds a way. <laughs> Indeed. In your dreams. Dreamcast. Um, it's a thing people really like. Uh, Lib Retro wants to accommodate those people who don't own a Dreamcast but want to play some Dreamcast games. And now it's even better because before, once upon a time, you used to need to dump the BIOS of your Dreamcast. Um, now you don't. There's a completely open source implementation of the Dreamcast BIOS that claims about 90% compatibility, even with the Windows CE and native games, because the Dreamcast was using Windows CE. Which is why the which is why Microsoft killed it in favor of the Xbox. Um, this has been a bit of a hurdle when it has come to open source uh, Dreamcast emulation, though. Um, a lot of the closed source, um, a lot of the closed source Dreamcast emulators have they probably ship with a just ripped copy of a BIOS, but we wouldn't know because we can't. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah. Um, but now we have a completely open source one. So um, the other neat thing is that it supports network multiplayer that works with actual Dreamcasts. So you can have crossplay between uh, PC running LibRetro and an actual Dreamcast if you have the uh, hardware. And there's still a fairly active Dreamcast modding community, so that is definitely a thing. <laughs> but now you don't have to go to a sketchy website to download Dreamcast biases if you don't have the OG hardware, which is pretty nice. Yeah, and that is a very important thing because there are a few emulators out there that have managed to, like, side skirt the whole BIOS issue. Um, RPCS3. Looking at you. No, not <laughs> RPC, not RPCS2 though, or PCSX2. No, PCSX2. Uh, you still need to dump uh, the uh, PS2 BIOS or go to one of the aforementioned sketchy websites. And yeah, PCSX2 is like the glaring example, but th there's a bunch of others uh, still out there that need that proprietary blob to be dumped and then used on the emulator. So yeah, please, emulator developers, look into more open source biases please yeah i don't know every time I, I you've definitely played more with um emulation than i have Pedro. i think about it and it's like that sounds like a fun idea maybe we could multiplayer streams and it usually it's poo right right up at the controller configuration it's like, i don't care enough no to be honest, it's better nowadays because uh, it'll give you an actual picture of the controller and you'll click on the button that you want to assign then tap the whatever button it is on your controller. It's like, oh, look, there we go. <laughs> also, also, Lip Retro uses SDL2, so most likely yep. you plug in a controller and the defaults are where you expect them to be. They're so pretty sane, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there, there's a lot less of that. Usually, usually it's like the, the fake net play where it's like, oh yeah, we're going we're gonna to pretend that this is actually a local console when it's really over the network. That's usually when I find emulators eat shit, but... Mm. Um, yeah. It's pretty cool the way they've done this, and I know this will never happen. I would probably pick it up a lot more if like Sony, whoever, they... For your old generation of like games that you're not physically making anymore, let me buy them. Let me buy the ISOs mm -hmm. and download no, them but, um, from you at you know instead of going to Sketchertron Matic nine thousand dot. But then you don't have to pay seventy dollars for the remaster repackage for their new console each and time each and every time they release a new console. Then. But I wasn't going to buy it anyway. Don't, why don't you think of the poor multimillionaire corporations? Why don't you respect their needs? Huh? I don't know, huh? man. I don't know. Hey, maybe you want to capture your console. You can now do that. Well, you've been able to do it. But if you paid attention to the internet, well, YouTube anyway, they would argue against that. We're not talking about just on Linux. Uh, Windows 2. I'm talking about a Blackmagic Intensity Pro 4K. Getting that installed on Linux, be it Fedora or be it Debian-based system. and d also Debian? Debian. 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 <laughs> Debian. Debian slash Ubuntu. <laughs> so we can put that together and uh, yeah, it works. Uh, what? I'm, I'm, hey? just, I'm, just th I'm just thinking of like, <laughs> you suck, <laughs> Debian. That's the joke. <laughs> <laughs> 
turns out it's reasonably simple to put together. And I wanted to throw this together because we had a um, DeckLink Mini 4K. And we had the Blackmagic Intensity Pro to just set it up. I was like, hey, I want to play with this. See how this works. And there's a lot of videos. They're like, no, this will set your house on fire. It doesn't work. The latencies work. That's bullshit. It's a bunch of myths. It's a bunch of people who didn't RTF M. It just works. Setting up with OBS, it just works. There's no craziness to it. You just add a source and it says black magic device and you just like the one that you want. Put it on HDMI, put it on component out. Use your spit of audio, S video, you name it. And um, I know Atomic was throwing some static. He's like, oh, they'll overheat. They don't. They got fans on them. By the way, fans, they're not loud. I've heard complaints about that. And it's like, uh, I genuinely watched somebody who's like, no, I can hear him. Like, Do you have the side of your case open? And he was like, when I'm streaming, you're trying to stream next to a microphone with a case on your desk? <laughs> Go play in traffic. Um, anyway, uh, I was just surprised that not that people didn't read the manuals, had a problem with them, returned them. It's that they went through all that. Then made a video about not them not doing that and put it on YouTube and said, these products are, and I'm not shilling for black magic, man. I'll blow them up in a heartbeat. But these devices are legit. Pedro and Jordan are coming through them right now. 1080p 60 up to uh 2160p at 30. It's kind of brilliant. Terrifying. Yep. You don't you don't you don't need me in 4K. You don't. You, no. you <laughs> Although don't. uh those uh black magic 4K with four HDMI ends. Uh, yeah, those do tend to heat up a bit. There was even that, uh, I think you shared it, Ven, on Discord, the, that post with the passive heatsink. No, there was a guy sh showing that you can passively <laughs> cool the things. <laughs> that that was kind of the whole point of that. It was like, yeah, they run so hot, you don't even have to put a fan on them. <laughs> Wait, what? This, this this is like some Jeff Goldblum out of Jurassic Park shit. It's like you 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 were so obsessed with if you could, you never stopped to think if you should. I don't know, man. I don't know. There's a lot of like misinformation going around and Linux support. It says Linux on the front of the damn box. I mean, they've supported Linux for a long time, so I'm gonna show them a little bit of love after giving them 200 bucks. Ding. Yep. All right. Money money has changed hands. Something else has changed hands, too, but we'll talk about that in a little bit as we throw chairs at Ion Furry. Run to the hills! Run for your life! It's the Chairquisition! This week we're taking a look at Iron Fury, not Iron or Ion Maiden, because then we'd get sued by... Uh, Sony or something like that. It's developed by Avoid Point and for the 3D Realms, published by them. Uh, it's on the build engine, so you know it's advanced technology. You can pick it up for about uh, 25 bucks US, but if you want a physical copy because you care about those things and you take good care of discs, then you can buy it for about 60 bucks. Um, what is it? 3D Realms creators of Duke Nukem 3D, Prey, Max Payne are excited to team up with Void Point to bring the legendary build engine famously known for classic first person shooters such as Duke Nukem 3D, Shadow Warrior, and Blued. Ion Fury is the real deal. Is it? Well, we're going to find out as we subject it to our whim. So, under Fedorf, how did it run? Dude, all right, so nostalgia time, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we got to try it out over here on Vidorf um, 3D, which is like hacked together. It, it, it resembles, it's like a nephew of Fedora 30. I just had to do some things to it. A bad touch. Uh, does it look? Um, 1920X Threadripper, 32 gigajoules of RAM, NVIDIA 2060 RTX. Definitely not on for this one, but I tried. I did display it at 3840 by 2160 again. All the frames. 244 whatever the max was for the limiting uh the graphics hipster 3d i don't know is that a thing can we say that now i don't know uh get off my lawn no glitches whatsoever uh it worked it's a build engine it's been time tested since i was a teenager building levels for duke 3d and um it's got nice glidey WASD controls i mean everything worked uh activate stuff with the default layout no complaints whatsoever so yeah clean bill of health on the qa on feed or 30 
<laughs> yeah, on Fedora 30, which is the non then fucked around with Fedora, uh, with the i7-6700K with the mitigation turned on, GTX 1080Ti, their 2 gigs of RAM, bunch of NVMe drives. It's fun. Um, does it launch? Well, you know, it's the fucking, it's eDuke, so I would hope so. It's available in a repo. You can install it and be good to go. Performance-wise, yeah, it's fucking eDuke, so I'm not expecting any major performance dips. Graphics. Surprise, surprise, it's eDuke. I mean, their goal was to make it look like a late 90s FPS, and lo and behold, they dude. And control was, as it should be. As it should always be. I'll give it four cheers. What about you, Pedro? <laughs> well, it does launch over here with the 3700X and the GTX 1080 on Solus. And uh, the performance, yeah, V-Sync was on and it stayed on. It ran at 60, um, be it at 1080 or UHD, no issues whatsoever. Um, the graphics, well, I mean, look at it. it, it it's Duke Nukem. Uh, <laughs> the character sprites are a bit different, but it's still Duke Nukem. And the controls, yeah, you have rebindable keys and the sensitivity slider uh, actually works, so that is very nice to see. So yeah, clean bill of health over here. Noodle-tastic. <laughs> All right, did you have fun with it, Ven, though? Uh, man, this is a hard ask. It's a bit of a tough sell, let me think about it, really, because um, it's strange playing Duke Nukem 3D at 2160 on a 43-inch monitor man it just is um out of the box the moves wicked slick felt good though felt really good the pixels so crisp but still so pixel that kind of worked um they got the look right and most importantly the feel of what i remember is duke nukem 3d way back when in the dos ages uh, that's down pat it's fast paced and it's fucking cruel, man. It, it, it's got some hard to it. I was killed to death, like definitely like three, possibly four times before even thinking about getting to that checkpoint. It's been a while since that's happened. Games have gotten too easy, man. This, this is smashes you right back to then. Uh, then I remembered, uh, quick safes. They were a thing in the game. Kind of sucked after that. Kind of sucked some of the fun out of it for me because. I was powering through, I was like, fuck, 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 I gotta learn this. Because you do have to learn when you're chugging through the level where the enemies are, because they compensate for their dipshit AI with enemy placement. So they're exactly where you don't need them to be, guaranteed. Um, good level design, fun guns, and you know, it's something to help you like forget that you're fast approaching middle age and your kids will soon be expecting you to pay for college. Yeah, you can escape that for a few hours. And yeah, I know. I know, man. 24 wet, stinky caches. That's a little on the steep side for that taste of nostalgia. But let's face it. You know what? Little Billy, he's going to drop out in the first semester anyway. And come back home to live with you. Forever. But still, it's a decent bit of kit. I had a fun time with it. Uh, so, it's just sort of want, man. Definitely two cheers on that. Yeah, I, I, I too was a little tripped up with the uh, the grenades, because they're not grenades, they're roly-poly bombs, and if they don't hit anything, you can just pick them up again, which was not the expected behavior. But anyways, yeah, it's not a bad little shooter, even if you are maybe afraid to shoot strangers. The levels are well-designed, and they employ the Jacque, uh style of looping in and of, on itself, requiring keys and whatnot. So you're all so you can sort of learn the ins and outs of the level and maybe use them to your advantage because yeah, like Ven said, that enemy placement is pretty spot on despite the fact that some of these guys are just kind of walking into well, being walls. able to do things uh, like yeah, I knew it, like the viewing security cameras like back in 1996 or 90, yeah 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 um yeah I guess one 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 thing I've definitely heard about this game uh, and I kind of just find myself agreeing with it is like it doesn't really do anything new or in in innovative eh. Um, but like it's, I can, I can respect the fact that it's a well done implementation. Um, they, they do try to be clever at times. Like they try to prey on your fear of the dark, uh, by doing this thing where you walk down a hallway and the lights go out and then a bunch of skull spiders come in and kill you. But then they're like, then your brain goes, Oh wait, they just gave me an Uzi. So I should use that. Right. Yeah. And then it's not scary. It's just like, Oh, okay. Um, but yeah, if you're uh, down depressed or low, maybe give this a look. 
Uh, the devs um, were nice enough to send us some keys, uh, so we gotta give them credit for that because uh, this is paid shilling 101. Um, I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'd say maybe wait till it goes on sale. Um, if if you're a big fan of Duke 3D and you really want to play in more of that, then you know this this is for you. Um, if you're looking for a modern shooter with modern design sensibilities. Go go look elsewhere. The game, do, frankly, does do a pretty terrible job of conveying some of the stuff it expects of you to do. Like shooting that fan, for instance, like at the beginning of this video. Man, there's some hangout chat logs of me being very confused by that. Because you didn't have to do that anywhere else. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll give it three chairs. It's, it's a solid game. Check it out if you want into that stuff. Pedro? Yeah. Gonna shoot a fire extinguisher? <laughs> no. Oh, boo. Uh, I will at one point. Uh, don't you worry. Uh, at this point... I'm honestly done with 2D platformers, and um, at some point I will probably be done with old-looking sprite-based 3D shooters, uh, but that point isn't here yet, and so I very much enjoyed Ion Fury. It's um, it's more Dukin, and I don't get to give money to... Um, Randy Pitchford, because Gearbox are currently the ones who hold the rights to Duke Nukem. So, yeah, it, as far as far as I'm concerned, it's all positives. Uh, seriously, though, the the devs of Void Point, they did a very good job of capturing the fast-paced combat in intricate levels that loop back in on themselves. And you do need to be considerate with your ammo because the game, there are certain sections where it's very stingy and then, oh, look, boss fight. Oh, crap. Uh, so, yeah. You'll need to be considerate with your ammo, and there are certain enemy types that clearly they seem to go down much faster with specific weapons. Uh, so it's very carefully crafted out for you to use different weapons at different times. Uh, in my not-so-humble opinion, it's a very good blend of the modern complexities and intricacies with an old-looking style of game. Uh, I like E. I like E very, very much. Even uh, Shelly's quips, like the main character, she's... It's Duke Nukem. Of course, the main character is going to quip. Uh, but they are scattered out enough that I don't immediately uh, feel the need to go into the audio settings and bring that voice slider all the way to zero. So, four chairs as far as I'm concerned. One oh, thing that kind of trips right. me up is that the enemy noises are in the soundtrack. So periodically oh, yeah. you'll hear like get her <laughs> and you'll like expect to someone to attack you but no that's just that's just in the soundtrack. Um yeah. Also we probably I mean could have done with a little more variation in enemy design. Yeah, well, and in the first chapter it's always these enemies yeah. but uh, once you defeat the first boss it, there's actually some variety there. We well, have a little bit of variety in the first chapter but it's mostly like um palette swaps right yeah <laughs> yeah the, the 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 ghost dudes they go from yellow to red to silver i guess so if you want to go i don't i don't, I don't know it's where just I'm going one of the one. beautiful thing one of the beautiful intricacies of um <laughs> ion Look, I bunch it, intricacies it, it, okay it's, it, it, listen it's not very in 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 Indeed. All right, bum, coming bum, up bum, next. Bum, bum, you thought we were done talking bum, about this? No, nope. we got we got more Hell hate mail no. about it. More. Oh yeah. Stay tuned. <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? We've reached the end of yet one more uh, Linux Gamecast Weekly, and chances are, for the <laughs> three hundred and sixty fifth time. We are, yeah, it, that's yet one P more Pedro, show. Pedro, are, are, are you saying that you can watch one episode of Linux Gamecast Weekly a day for a year and not oh, yeah. kill yourself? Well, I don't know about not killing yourself. You're probably what contemplating that at this Difficulty point? multipliers on everything, man. You're like, <laughs> because I, cause I like it hard. Mm. Yeah. Hey, if you like it hard. Yeah, you can go to LinuxGamecast.com and hit that contact button if you'd like to throw some hate mail our way. Make sure you pick uh, Linux uh, LGC, um, no, not Linux Weekly. L L Linux Weekly <laughs> Daily Gamecast <laughs> Weekly Daily yes. Gamecast. Org. Make sure you pick LGC Weekly from the little drop down you think, or if you, uh, you want to, you can ask Jordan for some relationship advice. 
Uh, if got, you're a I game developer, and <laughs> if you'd like to, you know, have us have a look at That's your game. That's nothing jumper cables wouldn't sort. <laughs> well, <laughs> I'm like Jordan, don't don't nipple clamps. Don't threaten me with a good time. Right, right. <laughs> you can, uh, if you're a game developer, just be sure to send us three keys or a build that we can I'm share amongst all of us. Speaking of that, Pedro, <laughs> guess what a game developer did earlier this week. They sent us the one key, or maybe two. Nope, just, just because just, fuck just one. Just one clearly read everything. I was like, hi, <laughs> how are you? And posted it, and was like, oh, here, would you like to play my game and promote? It's like, I know you read everything, because this wasn't like a copy pasta. and completely missed. <laughs> so I haven't decided whether or not one of us might randomly play it, or we might just throw it up and give it away, because... Maybe maybe we could do a King Solomon and cut the key into three parts and then give each of us a third of the key. Dick move, man. Dick move. <laughs> Apparently, uh, much like releasing games on Steam. Oh, yes. yes. This is from uh, SSK, Super Saiyan. I'm not going there. Anyways, he says, <laughs> fuck Steam. If you are going to promote this game, then promote the physical copy so people can actually get something in return for their money. This actually got a proper physical release for PC, unlike 99 plus percent of games these days. Get off my long. Steam and Valve are the antithesis of Linux. I, 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 okay, I, hang on, hang on. I, got, I, I was rocking and rolling with you, like doing your thing, like right up until you get up to antithesis. Antithesis. <laughs> no, there's that's space. how it's spelled. That is exactly how it was typed too. There was anti and thesis. You know, you know what? I, I will take I will take that lump. That is correct. You are that's right. <laughs> anti thesis. To, 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 that, that, that was like, oh man, you 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 fucked up the end game because it's like, okay, maybe this <laughs> means something. Maybe the kids these days say anti thesis. <laughs> and you know what? They fucking don't, you moron. Um they don't. <laughs> Anyways, Pedro, Pedro, you uh, you have a thing. I have a thing, but I'll wait for you because you wrote something in the show notes and I didn't. So. Okay. Uh, well, uh, the thing is, you know, leaving the anti thesis bit to, till after Jordan does his thing. Uh, I did ask uh, the Ion Fury people uh, on Twitter if they had a um, Linux version in the that was shipped with the boxed version, and I got a like from. Uh, one of the level designers, but I never actually got an actual answer, which leads me to believe that they do not. So, yeah. I'm just going to say, like, if you're going to care about physical copies for software, I feel you have missed the point entirely. Physical <laughs> copies are terrible in the advent of the society where, like, 10 megabit e or... In, in, in excess of 10 megabit e internet do, do is you know, commonplace. Do you, know, do you know who hates digital copies the most? Who? Hoarders. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> it's, it, it's, it's true, but like, it's, it's fucking bits. At least with a digital copy, when you install it the next time around, you don't need to download all the patches from freaking GameSpy or whatever. The, it's, it's updated. You get nice stuff like Cloud Sync and Steam Overlay. And also, you know, yeah, Valve is the antithesis, the anti-thesis. Anti-thesis. Anti yes. Yeah. The anti no, motherfucker. No, we're the anti-thesis. <laughs> yeah, we, we, yeah we, we, do, we do not summarize anything. We just make it even more obscure. Um, but that's the thing. Okay, Valve okay. and Steam have done a lot more for Linux gaming than basically any other gaming company, at least when it comes to AAA developers. Yeah, Valve is not and steam is most definitely not the antithesis of linux they have done more for linux than you you you, you can tell basically by anyone else in the gaming world listen the man, you, 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 you can go around swinging your big thesis but i'm anti that <laughs> <laughs> listen man every, every, everyone's got a thesis maybe you got an uncle thesis maybe you're an antithesis i don't know old uncle thesis bad right. <laughs> yeah I, I think on that Decide. I didn't fuck it. Whatever. <laughs> the thesis. The, 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 you can always find us over. around 9, 8, ah, 30, standard moon time, uh, where we get the show started an hour earlier. If you patron, come hop in Discord, say hello. We do the pre free super shows, and it's brilliant. It's thestastic. Um, <laughs> if you want to get hold of me, I'm at Finn Stone on Twitter, um, something on mass.linuxgamecast.com. Come say hi and all that fun stuff. 
That's brilliant. I'm Jordan Swung. I'm your favorite grandpa thesis, and you can find me on Twitter at The Burning Fool or on Mastodon at Frojo at our Mastodon at mass.linuxgamecast.com. And unlike your grandpa, actually, no, no, eject, no, too dark, too dark. <laughs> Next. And uh, since Plage Marizzo hasn't made an appearance in a long, long time, I'm totally going to take North Ranger's thing and say that I am anti these nuts. <laughs> you can find me at Unaccounted for on Twitter. That's the best way you can reach me. But just, yeah, just tweet at me and I'll get back to you. <laughs> Whatever, man. You don't remember the genie from Pee Wee's? He's got like the thing. I don't, I don't know. You're going to have to summarize that in some kind of sentence. I, but I, I, know, you're an, I, I, yeah. I know you're anti that. <laughs> you're an anti thesis. Dad I'm an anti theist. That's gross. what I am. Bye. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to go there. Um, we got to thank. <laughs> we got we to gotta thank the lovely people who are making this possible. Our wonderful executive producers, whose names will be flying by in space. Very shortly, they're freaking oh, unicorns. Oh my God. <laughs> Gotta thank Arthur and Mr. Fox Dog, Empty, the Atomic Gas, Mike G, for Tiles of Power, Barbara M. Deltius, Hoplo, Justin, and Scoot. What about Scoot. these guys? <laughs> Dementor, Rene, Martin, Jill, and Steve, Kim, Daniel, Techmad, Simcha, the Sildat, Igor, Mir, Scott, Matt, uh, <laughs> Ryan, Linux Noob, Evandro, <laughs> Master yes. Dak. Brown, Newman, Smashley, Pablo, Max, Jay, M. Langston, Massavoni, Luke W., Christopher C., Zoe, Billy Jack, Nine, um, Frank's fucker, Colsta, Nibbles, Mr. Amish, Basil, O'Dell, Vertnog. I guess we got to bump Mike G to sixteen now. He's got that. He's got that crazy <laughs> multiplier. Yeah. Oh man, he, he just combo keeps breaking breaker. them in. <laughs> Frank, Frank, get out here! Come on, show him, show him, show him your stuff. Nope. He scares Frank. theses, man. <laughs> yeah. Frank, you freaking Upside coward. down, Frank. Oh. <laughs> Get out of here. We're done with you. I'm sick of you. Fuck you, too. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I keep pointing at the wrong camera. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> I, 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 I don't even have two cameras and I'm looking at the wrong camera. <laughs> Five dudes.